was worth it, the weather. Thank you all so much for coming. We really uh, appreciate the effort and coming all the way to Lake Tahoe to join us. Thank you so much. Okay. I, I give this about a 50-50 chance making it through this, so please bear with. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, Rick and Kara last night, unbelievable. Thank you so much. Uh, we had such a good time last night. Could have been better. Great time. And I think I know your Quinn and Olivia. Where are they? Are they here? Okay. Anyways. You guys were outstanding, so only made the, uh, the speech better. So thank you guys. Quit, yay! There he is. Oh, can anyone come up here? He'll think about it. <laughs> All right. The other, the other one, the other person we like. To, we have huge thanks to is Bill Hatch, my brother-in-law. Uh, Stepping up without hesitation and officiating his very first ever wedding ceremony. Thank you, Bill. That's you, man. Love you. But I have to mention the Tinkerbell thing was news to me. So, uh, Blake, we need to talk later about that. <laughs> oh, there he is. Okay. Anyways, I thought I would talk a little bit about why we're here in Lake Tahoe, what, what brings us to this area in uh, Squaw Valley, Lake Tahoe. If we dig back to 1965, Bob and Sue Hatch, uh, Molly's grandparents and the original Lake Tahoe visionaries, uh, purchased a, va a vacation home at the Tahoe Tavern just a few miles from here at the lake. The Hatch family would spend a week each summer enjoying all things Tahoe. Fast forward 20 years, I am in the picture. Linda and I marry and have two incredible kids. Lake Tahoe now becomes our family vacation destination. Uh, I can still remember pulling Molly and Eric to the lake in the red wagon, filled with kid gear, the many rafting trips down the Truckee River, bike rides out of control, sledding with Molly down Toboggan Hill. Those activities and traditions have been shared with family and friends every year since. We love this area. So now, jump to 2005, and a new group of friends enters the picture. Molly and her newfound college family has decided Lake Tahoe is not such a bad place to be. Uh, at this point, I'm guessing half the Chapman College alumni has celebrated numerous spring breaks and holidays at the lake. So, so we weren't surprised when Blake proposed to Molly at the lake on the pier last year. So we always expected a wedding that might take place here, but maybe with just a little bit less snow. <laughs> All right, so, uh, and speaking of Chapman, Chapman alumni, when Molly enrolled some 12 to 13 years ago, we had no idea all of you would be part of the package. I'm looking at you guys, you know, all the girls, all the guys, good friends. So Linda and I have enjoyed being included in the group and getting to know all of you. Uh, and by the way, inflatable beer pong, didn't know anything about that <laughs> until I saw it being played in my own pool. So uh, anyways, thank you guys for sharing that. Uh, and, and this is a quick uh, Blake side note. I'll be nice. So, uh, I think most of you know Blake worked for us for a couple of years, just out of school. I believe this predates their relationship. Uh, we really enjoy having Blake. And during that period, occasionally, Linda would mention, you know, Bill, Blake will sure make a great son-in-law for some lucky family. <laughs> you know? We talk about destiny, right? So it was happening. So since that time, we've traveled together, We've camped together, we've worked on projects together, driven in Christmas car parades together. We've really gotten to know and experience this relationship firsthand. And it's a great one. Uh, we couldn't be happier. So, a toast to Molly and Blake Sullivan. Yeah. You two have turned a well-traveled friendship into a loving and caring relationship. 
Always approach and solve life's challenges together. Continue to love, laugh, and drink really great wines. <laughs> Enjoy the journey and have a wonderful life together. We love you both. Yeah. Here's the way we go. And I, I wanted to mention one other person that had a small part in this as well, standing next to me while I play it. Uh, the mom of all moms, the master organizer, uh, the one that really went out on us. So, uh, and I think you're going to need more than that. So, <laughs> but thank you all. So, uh, it was a service like this, right? All right, well, here goes nothing, Blake. I wrote down a bunch of words here for you, so I'm going to read them. So for those that don't know me, my name is Matt. I am Blake's older brother and appropriately named Best Man. So first we're going to start with the thank yous. First, I would like to thank the Ainsworth family for hosting what has already been What has already promised to be a wonderful evening tonight. Also, I'd like to thank my parents for hosting a lovely welcome party last night. But most importantly, I would like to thank a few other people here. Bob and Sue, Molly's grandparents. And Bill and Linda, Molly's parents. And Blake's parents, who are coincidentally my parents as well, Rick and Carol. I would like to thank you guys for being such great examples of what a marriage should be. And guys, be sure to follow their example, and everything will always be okay. You have some great examples here to live by, so just remember those. Um, and last, I would like to thank all of, all of you here. You guys made the effort to come out here and visit beautiful... Lake Tahoe, and coming out here to celebrate this lovely, beautiful couple and supporting them through this venture that is tonight. So thank you for coming out. So go ahead and thank yourself. So now we're on to the good stuff. So Blake, or should I say Blake or Bugs, as some of you fondly know him as? How am I doing so far? Should I keep going or should I just stop here? Uh, well, you got the mic. I'll admit it. He cut it. I'm out. Thank you. You all have a good night. So I will admit this was easily the toughest part of writing this speech. And um, I was happy to do it, but, you know, this is a tough venture. Look at what I'm working with. So let me start with this, Blake. Um, you can go ahead and finally take a deep breath. Yeah, a real deep breath. You've done it. You've appropriately tricked Molly into marrying you. <laughs> you. You've done this all with running out of luck. I mean, your luck ran through this whole course, and here you are. You're sitting here in front of all these people that you love, and you know, you've done it. And there's no other way to put it other than that you're lucky, man. You got really lucky. So you'll, you'll find your life to be a lot easier the sooner that you recognize how lucky you are. And you'll be luckier for even longer as soon as you realize that. Well, I guess I'll get into talking about why it is that you are so lucky. I mean, you do deserve Molly. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. I mean, you are pretty much the kindest, most loyal, and most loving person I know. So. I'll give you that. So it makes some sense why you would catch Molly. 
I get that. But you're also, how should I put this? Uh, a little eclectic is probably the best way to put it. Right? I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Like, you're a little bit out there, which is good. So, I mean, it, it might be things like, I don't know, your choice of movies, which is your preference of anything animated or comic related over anything, let's say, adult life. <laughs> or how about your choice of birthday destinations, like um, the adult arcade where we celebrated this year's birthday. You turn 32. Or how about your preference to boots, to shoes, computers, to almost anything else, or your monsters that you like to post on social media? <laughs> Which are great, but they're all eclectic. Which is fine. It, it, this just goes to show that you're luckier than most to catch somebody like Molly. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not to say that you're not wonderfully creative and talented like your monsters, commercials, and, and such. Which is charming in its own right, but still, dude, you're so lucky. <laughs> You're so, so very lucky that you found an angel with such an acquired taste who loves you. So appreciate that, and please foster that, continue to foster that. Now, I'm going to move over to why even you're lucky to have me as your best man. Um, but maybe you weren't so lucky to always have me as an older brother. I mean, you were, you were apt to mention that in your speech at my wedding, so thank you for bringing that to my attention. It, it may or may not have been things like, I don't know, teaching you how to greet mom at the door with the big middle finger. That's how you say hello. That didn't go over too well. Or how about the times that I would sit on you and tap you on your chest till you gave into my demands? <laughs> or how about when I would seek to destroy you at any game we'd ever play? But through it all, I'm thankful that you stuck with me all your life as if you had a choice. But I'm humbled to be your best man and honored to be your brother. Now moving on to Molly, which was the easiest part of writing this speech. Molly, you look radiant, beautiful, and all things gorgeous tonight. Not that you don't always, but you especially do tonight. And I would like to thank you personally for coming into the Sullivan's life. For me, it's been great to have another sister to have fun with. And for the rest of the Sullivans, we gained another kind and loving member of the family. It also doesn't hurt that you have a love for country music. So from a Sullivan's perspective, it couldn't have been a better fit. Blake, we've known for a while that she was the one, so thanks for catching, catching on and making this thing happen for now. <laughs> Aside from your ability to fit in so naturally with us, we couldn't be more happy to be gaining the whole Ainsworth family as family. You guys might really just be the most wonderful people I've ever come across. And there's one other thing, Molly. Thank you for being a superstar when it comes to all things Blake. You've always been so supportive and caring no matter how crazy the venture. Let's say living over 500 miles apart while Blake takes a leap of faith and decides to work for, let's say, Apple next. <laughs> or how about that little Bugs here started his own business this year? And all have been a smashing success, and. All of it without luck, I might add. Just good old-fashioned hard work, which Blake is very well known for. So thank you for always being his champion. He couldn't and wouldn't do any of this and everything else there is to come in the future without you. And I know that for a fact. Now as we establish how awesome the two of you are individually, it's only natural to know that the two of you will be nothing less than awesome together. And I think we can all agree to that, yes? Now as this evening wears on, and even the days, and even some months continue after tonight, you're going to get a lot of advice on what makes a good marriage. So here comes the big brother in me. Blake, you might have heard this once before, many, many, many times before, actually. And if I can borrow some words from a wise old man, 
who actually would tell us every time before we left the house. His name's Dad. And these are good words to live by. You too. Don't forget who you are and where you come from. Stay true to who you guys are together because you're something special both individually and collectively. So Blake and Molly, I'm so happy for you too and the future that you have ahead of you. And if we could all raise a toast to Blake and Molly and give a good old cheer. milestones together, from witnessing each other graduate college to standing by each other's side on our wedding day. Um, throughout our friendship, people would often get us confused. Even yesterday, someone asked if we were sisters. They're like, no, you have to be related. No, there's something. No, we're not. Um, so today, I'm going to pretend to be Molly and play her role as storytelling kindergarten teacher. <laughs> so once upon a time, 13 years ago, Molly was a member of the Alpha Phi sorority at Chapman University when Caroline was just when uh, Caroline was just a wee little freshman who decided to rush that house. Uh, Molly witnessed their connection and decided to choose Caroline as her little sis in the sorority. Um, the two instantly became inseparable. They both loved Taco Tuesday, were equally bad at Guitar Hero, and really enjoyed the same music. One of their favorite hits was a song that many other girls here know. So ladies, would you mind joining me for a quick serenade to Molly? And if you guys know this song, please join us. Cue music. musical bonding, um, <laughs> the two became roommates and moved into a house they would call home for the remainder of college. 923 East Palm brought countless, shoot, oh my god, six? 926 East Palm. 623. 623 East Palm. 623 East Palm. Actually, I wrote it down to 923 East Palm. Brought countless memories and housed numerous lifelong friends. Blake Sullivan would even stop by every once in a while for a game of flip cup or beer pong. Um, so during this time, Molly and Caroline be they became closer and began to discover each other's habits and hobbies. For Caroline, it was eating peanut butter and jelly and ruffles and cottage cheese for lunch every single day. I'm not kidding. It's great, it's, you should try it. Um, but for Molly, it was her horrible taste in television shows. We're talking 16 and pregnant, toddlers and tiaras. John and Kate plus eight, Jersey Shore, Dance Moms, the list goes on. Sorry, Blake, I know Teen Mom just came back, so I hope you're enjoying the new season. <laughs> but despite Molly's questionable taste in television shows, she has lots of other endearing qualities. So this college story has ended, but the friendship endures. Molly is really the kind of friend you come across once in a lifetime. She is loyal, don't make me cry. Um, now I lost my place. <laughs> she is loyal, generous, and supportive, and always knows how to cheer you up with a slice of Linda's famous rum cake or one of her hilarious jokes. Linda! <laughs> um, and that's one of my favorite traits of Molly, her quick wit and sense of humor. 
As I'm sure most of you know, Molly is full of jokes and infamous for creating nicknames for anyone and anything. Pet toys, friends, but particularly her classroom pets. Bette Midler, Gina Davis, and Susan Sarandon have all had a starring role in Molly's classroom, in rat form. But so if it's not naming pet rats, it's naming her lovely cat, Sergeant Pepper and Rigby. And fortunately, Molly found somebody who adores, or should I say, accepts her cat obsession. Um, so I met Blake at Chapman University when Molly introduced me when they were just friends. Um, but I really got to know Blake over the past few years when Molly and I would set up double dates with our then boyfriends, now husbands. We had a feeling the guys would hit it off. They bonded over superhero movies, Star Wars, Pokemon Go, uh, and Game of Thrones. Um, Blake, I could not think of a better match for Molly. You guys go together like Peter Parker and Mary Jane. Han Solo and Chewbacca, Pikachu and Ash, and Daenerys and her dragons. But in all seriousness, you are the perfect man for Molly, and I'm so thankful you came into her life. I love the joy you guys bring each other. Um, but I feel so fortunate to get to witness your marriage today and can't wait to share the next chapter in the story together. So let's all please raise a glass and cheers to the new Mr. and Mrs. Sullivan. mostly because we're family and our parents forced us to hang out and stuff. But um, luckily we do like each other. Uh, growing up, Molly was such a cool older cousin in my eyes. Uh, she took me to my first Britney Spears concert. Uh, she would play with my hair and give me the most stylish pair of French braids. And she had the absolute best hand-me-down clothing. Um, she was someone who I just had so much fun with, someone who took care of me, and someone who I really looked up to. And Eric, you are just as cool of a cousin, but your hand-me-downs did not work out well for me, so. <laughs> so uh, fast forward to a few years ago, Molly and I became roommates in Santa Monica. Um, she really took me under her wing and showed me the ropes of Santa Monica. Uh, she cooked the most delicious meals all the time and would always, always offer to share them with me. It did work out pretty well because in return, I would clean up a cat puke from Sgt. Pepper or Rigby when they had accidents. So that was the, uh, the trade-off there. But we'd sit on the couch in our PJs, drink rosé, watch tacky reality TV shows, which seems like that's a thing for you after Caroline's speech. Uh, go out for fabulous meals. I mean, we were we were living the life in Santa Monica, just two bachelorettes doing it big. <laughs> and then uh, one day, someone came along. Mr. Blake Sullivan came into the picture. Now instead of Molly and I sitting on the couch drinking rosé, there were three of us. Uh, those meals that Molly cooked now needed to feed three of us, which meant I had no leftovers for the next day. Uh, <laughs> and I have a big appetite, so... Blake also formed an instant connection with Rigby, which for those of you who don't know Rigby, she is the most difficult cat to win over. Uh, my months and months of hard work courting Rigby were quickly overshadowed when Blake came into the picture. Um, 
But in all honesty, none of those things bothered me because Blake wasn't just any guy. <sighs> sorry, it's sorry. Blake is a really great person. Uh, he's driven, he's kind to everyone, he's got a solid sense of humor, but most importantly, he's absolutely amazing to my cousin. I may be the younger cousin, but I'm still protective of my big cousin and I want what's best for her always. Um, I've seen firsthand the happiness that Blake brings to Molly. The two of them work so well together and I know that my cousin will be in really good hands for the rest of her life. Um, Molly and Blake, congratulations. We're all so, so happy for you guys. There's so much amazing stuff that lies ahead. I love you guys so much. <laughs> I just want to say a couple of quick words. It won't be too long. Look the bars right there. C E N T U R Y. Century. Yeah. Is that is that right? Okay. So, well, thank you all for coming up here. Um, we know it's a lot of work to come up to Lake Tahoe, but this is our favorite place on earth, and we're glad to have our most favorite people in the world up here. Uh, it means a lot to us. Um, the Hatch family, so Bob and Sue, <laughs> they've planted roots at the vacation house up here, uh, I don't know, a long time ago, and I don't think they knew that it was going to snowball into this, with the family always coming up here, uh, always hanging out, and um, me storing all my snowboard stuff there without them knowing. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, but, yeah. The Sullivans are now becoming like Tahoe people, so I'm glad that I could get my family up here and experience all of this. Um, sorry the weather did not comply this weekend, but here we are and we made it work. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so shout out to uh, Linda and our wedding coordinator, Donna, because yeah, they somehow moved mountains and achieved sainthood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there it is, yeah. They've, Alinda and Donna both achieved sainthood by dealing with a certain someone during this whole process. So, and just made miracles happen. And this is an amazing, amazing day for us both. So, uh, I just want to say thank you to them. So thank you, Mom. So here we are. Yeah, here we are. Um, yeah, so, and I also need to say thank you to my mom and dad for throwing an amazing welcome dinner. It was great, it was perfect. And also thank you all of you for babysitting my dad to make sure he was not overserved. Because <laughs> that was the last one. Yeah. Yeah. And I know it's a lot of time, energy, work, money to get up here and you know celebrate, celebrate with us. And I see you guys are gonna recoup all your costs at the open bar. So you're welcome. It's tip chat, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to see all of you on the dance floor and uh, let's celebrate.